Welcome to the family with Doug Sprinthal and Andy Brant Bernard. And what we're doing, ladies and gentlemen, we've got a lot of people that said, would you just start one show right after the other one? So now we're only giving it a few minutes between the two. So that's good. They you're, said, you're listening to the public? Mm -hmm. It's always a mistake. It's a big mistake. Okay. <laughs> we're going to do the opposite. We'll have an hour break between shows. An hour yeah, break. That's right. It'll just be to spite you. What career would you avoid even for double the pay? Is there one, any career that you focused on, even for double the money you're making, would you not do it? There are many. Many? Like what? Lineman, oil platform worker. Light bulb changer on top of the radio. Oh, antenna. God. Yeah, no. Hell no. <laughs> Give me a million dollars a year. I'm not doing that. Yeah, job. me neither. No. There have been a few people that have fallen off those towers that is true mm -hmm. we met with carmichael lynch years ago uh we were opening a subaru store and subaru national had just joined carmichael lynch as a big ad agency in oh, the Twin okay. cities they're the ones that came up with love it's what makes subaru a subaru it's been their slogan for the last 20 years or so mm -hmm. but they're also the ones and they showed it in this huge theater when they're giving us a walkthrough that did the coke ad for the guy changing the light bulb at the top of some oh, yep. hill in Shoreview. Yep. And to see it on a, like a 500-inch screen, I almost threw up. It's like, oh, my God. Yeah, I'm not a heights life. guy. Nope. Well, either. that's the thing is you're very tall. And tall people, I find, don't like heights. I can tell you where my – and I have a little bit of bridge phobia. I can tell you exactly when it happened. I was riding really? my motorcycle from here to Long Island for a wedding. And it's midnight, and you know the Verrazano Narrows Bridge? Oh, sure. It's like yep. 50 billion stories high. Right. Um, it's raining, and it's one of those steel deck bridges oh. where you can see right through it. Yeah. And the bike is, you know, motorcycle oh, on those steel deck bridges move all over. I was just yep. sure I was going to get killed. <laughs> and I have not, and now I was probably, I don't know, 21 or 22. Never, bridges never bothered me before that. Now I'm just like, Really? Just look straight ahead. Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. It is an average of 700 feet high. Oh, my God. So, yeah, you oh, fall yeah. off that, you're not coming back. Well, I would, that's it, the end. More likely, the worst thing that would happen is I would have got run over by a truck. I don't yes, think it was going to fall off the bridge. But, yeah, no, that's a, it's a, I think that's yeah. the highest bridge in New York. Maybe the George Washington's the same. I don't know. The Verrazano Narrows Bridge, my God. You can find a lot of Italians driving over that bridge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, how about the, why don't you go across the Royal Gorge Bridge in Colorado? Yeah. Why don't you Google that? What was it, about 1,200 feet or something? Uh, well, it is only 1,000 feet. Oh, well, it's only 1,000. I thought it was 1,200. But it spans a gigantic canyon. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, you're going over that thing, and it's, yeah, you might as well be in outer space. Have you seen pictures of those crazy pedestrian glass bridges that they have in China? We've been on one in, where oh. were we? Uh, Cal Canada? Canada. Yeah. In Canada, yeah. In uh, Banff, I think, right? Uh, oh, just thank you. west of Banff. Yep. Yeah. We went on one, and yeah, there was this one kid who was not happy about it. See, that's the funny thing is, I didn't, that I didn't bother that me. That didn't bother you. Okay. But I don't think I would go on today. I don't know why. I'm just like more and more afraid of heights as I get older. You're protecting your children. That could be, I suppose. Yeah, that's what it is. I don't know. It's just like, even though I know that this polycarbonate that it's made of could probably withstand a nuclear blast, still, it just, you know. It's yeah. It's like the observatory the, at the. It's not the Sears building anymore. It always will be. Yeah, it always will Chicago. be to anyone born before like the year two thousand. Right, but and they you see people stomping on the plexiglass or polycarbonate. Like, no, right. don't do that. The building will fall. Yeah, <laughs> this poor kid. But the the bridge that Andy's talking about is glass bottom or a clear. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm sure it's not actually glass. But not actually glass, but I would know, hope not. Something like that. But there was a nice young Asian kid, probably about 12 years old. Yeah. Oh, here it is. out. What's that? The Glacier Skywalk. Well, that's what it's called. That's where we were, yes. Okay. Mm hmm Asian kid's about 12 years old, walks out on the bridge, and he's looking at all the mountains, looks down, and faints. <sighs> so he falls over. So I go over to help the kid, and his parents, who don't speak English, ward me off. They're like, tell me again. They're laughing, joking, taking pictures oh, of their no. passed out yeah. son. Oh, my God. Now, again, he's not going to know they ever did that, but they were laughing their ass off that he fainted. How long ago was this? Uh, what, Quite Andy? a while. 
10, 15 Any years chance ago. he uh, grew up to uh, write the last episode of Squid Games? Yeah, man, well, maybe. Yeah, for real. Remember where they're going across the glass bridge and you don't know which pane is going to collapse and you'll plummet to your death. <laughs> oh See, my at that point, God. it's just like, give me the little girl with the machine gun mouth because... <laughs> I'd rather go out that way. Yeah. Wait a minute. Machine gun. What are, what are we talking about? The first, the very first, I think it was the first ever game they did, right? The yeah. Red light stop, green light go or whatever. Yeah. yeah. They, um, so you know how red light, green light works. I say green light and you have to run toward me. Right. And then I say red light and you have to stop. And if you move at all, then you're out. Oh. But in this one, you're not out. You get shot to death. <laughs> Oh, okay. You never watched Squid Game. I just we just watched that. A I've never watched it, ago. but I'm very familiar with that segment because it's like been memed a billion times. There you go. I don't know. I th I'm I think I might like it. It depends on how torture porny it gets. Um, it doesn't get any worse than that, I wouldn't think. Okay. Because and there is some character development in it that's kind of interesting. There's a re and that's not really my cup of tea, but I watch we watched the whole uh, season. And apparently they're going to bring up this another, put out another season because it was so popular. Oh God, I'm. Sh I think it was the most watched show of the year. Yeah. So yeah. Did you watch it with subs or dubs? Uh, God, that's a good. I think it was dubbed. Now that I think about it. Yeah, I think most people probably watched it dubbed. Yeah, it's right because it was like, look out behind you. Oh yeah. It was an Asian deal. Yeah, it's Korean. It's a Korean, Korean show, okay. but. So the 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 plot is there's this weird society that offers people all this money to go to this island and compete in these games. Okay. Squid and games. whoever wins is going to get a million dollars or whatever it is. But in the ver but they think it's just games. And like a first game is red light green light. So right. okay, this is great. Right. Until people start getting murdered. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That all works out. Many people claim they'd do anything to uh, be bringing home more bacon, but not all of them would be willing to switch careers to become a pig butcher. A new survey asked mm. people about undesirable jobs, careers they'd avoid even for double the pay they're getting now. The results uh, were uh, broken down by state, and here are some of the most popular responses. These are jobs... Or unpopular, as it were. Unpopular, because these are jobs people don't want. Right. Number 11, security officer. It's the worst uh, that Rhode Island could come up with. Well, security officer is not a bad Depends job. Depends on where you're a security. Are you well, security true. at like a jewelry store or at like, you know. A, a bar. Yeah. Or a children's like a playground or something. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Number 10 is a steel worker. It's the least desired in uh, Indiana, Kentucky, Michigan, Ohio, and Pennsylvania. Yeah, steel work is rough. Why Why is that? Why it's is it so rough? Because the melting point of steel is like several thousand degrees oh, that's Celsius. True. Yeah, that's true. Let's see. Melting point Anna. of steel. It is uh, 2,800 degrees Fahrenheit. Holy God. So I have melted aluminum and copper. I just set up like a little hobby foundry in my backyard. Just, I was mm -hmm. like, you know what? I've never melted copper before. Let's give it a go. <laughs> and <laughs> let's see. Copper melting point. The copper melting point is 1900 degrees Fahrenheit, so about 2000. So, steel, you've got another 800 degrees to go. And when I melted copper, the amount of heat coming out of that foundry, you could be across the backyard and it would still feel like your hand is right next to a fire. So, add 800 more degrees to that. I mean, so Andy, you're gonna be gonna ask you, Oh, I'm getting a leg lick today. Oh, uh, leg lick, Judy. Uh, leg lick. Uh, so do you just wake up one day and say, I'm going to go in the backyard and melt copper, or was there a longer chain of events before that? Well, I mean, it's more effort and research than you would expect. Well, maybe not. I would hope. I mean, you have to, like, find the right kind of brick. I was going to, um, I forget where I sourced it, but I had to go to, like, a place where they do, like, hello, you're uh -huh. on now. I had to go to a there place where they do like metal working and I was like, uh, do you guys have, you know, foundry brick? And they're like, yeah, we'll sell you some foundry brick. And so I had to cement that together with a special cement and you have to encase that all in, um, a different kind of brick. Um, oh, the foundry years. Yep. And then I had to, so what I did to melt it yet, you have to buy a crucible obviously, and you have to buy your scrap metal. But in order to get the heat, what I had to do is I had to. I got a propane blowtorch 
and I set it up and I was like, all right, here we go. We'll just uh, put the blowtorch on the crucible, melt some copper, <laughs> but it didn't get hot enough. And I determined that the reason was it wasn't getting enough oxygen. So I took a metal tube and duct taped a hairdryer to it and put the end of the tube in the foundry. And that gave me my oxygen. And there you go. Copper. Thank God he didn't burn the place down. Yeah, exactly. It was outside. <laughs> it was outside. Uh, no, it was. Uh, I was six at the time. It was yeah. in St. Paul. <laughs> I was in St. Paul. No, it was outside on a stone patio. So, so Alex you know. just got here to, to <clears throat> say if but it was no, it was, or not. It was the kind of thing that took probably a solid month of prep to do. Yeah. But I remember, once I did it, I was hard on that. Once I did it, I was like, you know what? I'm one of the few who's done this. I'm good. So huh. why did you have to do it? I just wanted to see what it was like. Oh, He's talking about right. his foundry. It created a penny shortage in St. Paul, Paul. Remember? Yeah. Actually, pennies are very low copper. Yeah, I know that. Yeah. No, Alex doesn't really well, didn't even know he, he had a foundry. She sure. Yes, you did. Probably. Melted he had a metal. Brick thing in the backyard in St. Paul. Yeah, well, that was weird. <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> there was you weird. go. Okay, we're coming. Oh, some, what we're a going morning. through some of the worst jobs that nobody wants to do. Okay. Okay, we've already been through security officer in Rhode Island, which I don't understand why why we didn't yeah, care I mean, about that. Yeah. In Rhode Island? Yeah, yeah specifically. Yeah, specifically, specifically Rhode, <laughs> Rhode well, Island. Well, if you're the, the security officer for all of Rhode Island, it's a small state, but it's still <laughs> a lot true. of walking. It's still a lot of coverage. What? what? <laughs> no, it's... <laughs> what website is this? It is... Um, what's it called? A uh, new survey on undesirable jobs that people would avoid even for double the pay they're making now. These are jobs they mm. do need, not want, even like, if you paid them double. What website are you on? What's double nothing? It's on uh, Wise Brother. <laughs> uh, okay. So we got, so far we've got security officer, then number 10 steel worker. It's the least desired in Indiana, Kentucky, Michigan, Ohio, and Pennsylvania. So places no. that where people know what steel working is like. Very yes, dangerous. Exactly. Yeah. Hard. Number nine is coal miner. It's not a coveted career path mm. in Wyoming. Where they mine coal, I would imagine. Yeah. Power line worker. It's the least desirable job in Mississippi, Missouri, Nebraska, New Hampshire, and Oregon. Yeah, that's what I said. Lineman. Lineman, yeah. Oh, no, thank right. you. Uh, logger. The least popular job in Montana, North Dakota, and Vermont. Huh. This one surprised me. A roofer. It's the least desired in Arizona, Arkansas, Oklahoma, South Carolina, Utah, and West Virginia. Arizona, I could see it'd be hot yeah. as hell. Oh, you there. imagine oh, a roofer being a roofer? Man, oh. Horrendous. I've, I've been on the roof to blow leaves out in Minnesota, and it was... I actually got like first degree burns on my hands crawling back down from the roof. So doing that in Arizona, I they, mean, they God. must roof at night. They have to. That's really the only way. It's, oh, because it's so hot well, there. Oh. Yeah, the shingles well, you, must get to like 150 yeah. degrees. Yeah, you literally there's just burn certain, yourself there's on just metal. certain types of the times of the year where you just can't do it. Well, no. although they they do use those um clay whatever the hell's. Instead oh, of those. shingles a yeah, lot. Yeah, yeah. They so maybe, yeah. maybe don't get as hot, maybe. But down in, in Florida, you see metal roofs all the time. Yeah, yeah you, know? you do. Can you imagine? That would be rough. Oh. We get to the top five, oil rig worker. It's a highly undesirable mm -hmm. career path in California, Louisiana, New Mexico, and Texas. Where all the oil rigs are. Yep. Number four, electrician. The least desired in Delaware, Georgia, and Hawaii. We still haven't run into Minnesota. Why would an electrician be bad? Yeah. I why? Don't I don't uh, get it. Yeah, I've done electrical work. It's not. I, mean, I think if you haven't done it, it's probably seems scarier than it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I would think you want you'd want to have some training. Yeah. Uh, you yeah. need to know what probably. you're doing. <clears throat> we get to the top three now, and Minnesota's still not mentioned yet. No, Minnesota's going to be like. Snow cheese man. curd tester. <laughs> We're gonna find out. Wisconsin go to her. Um, <laughs> skyscraper window cleaner. You Ooh, are correct. No, no oh. thank you. Yep, not me. Is that New York? I'm guessing. Uh, yeah. Most uh, the least, the most undesirable job in Connecticut, Maryland, New Jersey, New York, Tennessee, and mm -hmm. Washington, where there's high buildings. There you go. Number two, commercial fisherman, the least desirable in Alabama, Alaska, Florida, Maine, Massachusetts, and Virginia. I was gonna say Maine. Yep, that was my first job. Your first job was a commercial fisherman? Yeah, I worked horrible? on a lobster boat when I was 14. Where? In Maine. Yeah. Right in Maine. Yeah. Wow. Was it cold? Yes, it was. <laughs> it's yes, miserable. Which better, Maine was. lobster or Boston lobster? Well, they, mm. they all come from the same. Yeah. Actually, that's true. You might start calling them Canadian lobsters. Yeah. Because yeah. they're moving yeah. up the coast because the Gulf Stream keeps getting warmer. Yeah, they like it cold. The number one job that's the least desirable 
meatpacking plant worker. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even it. imagine. No. Uh, I got to think bending over picking like produce all day long would be kind of a crappy job as yeah. well. Yeah. Anything There's a lot field. of not great jobs. At least you're outside. At least yes. you're outside. Okay, the meatpacking plant worker, the number one least desired job in the United States, Colorado, Idaho, Illinois, Iowa, Kansas, Nevada, North Carolina, South Dakota, Wisconsin, and Minnesota. Yeah. I don't I'd rather do pretty much any of those other jobs. Most of the I mean, I'd rather do that than most of those other jobs, they said. Most of the jobs that you mentioned seem to me to be high pay anyway. They, they are, are yeah. yeah. They're they, very high pay, but they're also point. very yeah. dangerous. Like meat packing, I mean, it's probably somewhat so dangerous, but it's yeah, it's mostly me? just disgusting. Yeah, but yeah. it's like I'd rather be you know grossed out all day than be like, oh well, if this cable snaps, I'm dead. Well, you probably get used to being grossed out anyway. That's true. You or you have to, to be that specific kind of person. <laughs> Bart Simpson at the uh, fish packing plant. Yeah. Knife goes in, guts come out. <laughs> Knife goes in, guts come out. Yeah, oh, desensitize. <clears throat> I got to run this by you guys because it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger every day in the local newspapers. Oh, two shit. stories. Right. Two people killed in Becker County crash. At how many times a day are people killed in crashes? Though? I know. All and the it's time. the summertime. <clears throat> well, I suppose it's <laughs> going toward fall now, but I just don't understand why it, all these crashes. That's a lot of it is drunk drivers. And so, yeah, it is, isn't it? And this was just brought up again yesterday, and we got to do something about this problem in Minneapolis. Six juveniles arrested after armed uh, robberies crashes in South Minneapolis. They were like yep. 10 to 14. 10 to 14, and they're robbing people they at are. gunpoint. Yep. Like, I, yeah, I guess, I guess they've done this many, many, many times. Mm -hmm. These kids are just absolutely out of control. I don't think they go to school. What do you do? What do you do with kids like that? I mean, you put you put their parents in jail. Well, what good does that do? Because they're not parenting anyway. Yeah, they're already not part of. Or their lives. you know, maybe you've got a kid you just cannot control. I mean, sometimes yeah, that happens. That what happen. do you do? Yeah. What do you do with that kid? Well, back in the day, you went to St. Joe's, but I mm. think that's closed do they, now, isn't it? Do they have juvenile halls or juvenile? Ramsey County had a big one. I, we used to live a mile or two from there called Totem Town. Yeah. Oh yeah, Is that but still that there? Closed down ten oh. years ago. Maybe that's the answer. I don't know. All right. I think maybe we have our guests with us. You're maybe. kidding. Although the connection doesn't. And work. now it just disappeared oh, again. Fantastic to me. Uh, oh, they disappeared again. I guess as long as we can oh, hear them. there they are. Can, can we at least hear you? Yeah, this is Jason Kimmack. How's it going? Jason, how are you? This is Yay. great having you on Samaritan's Purse. <clears throat> Uh, I wanted to mention something. I'm glad you were able to come on today because this just came out in the local news here in Minnesota. Walls authorizes Minnesota National Guard to help out in Florida as Hurricane Milton approaches. Uh, now, you're in the Carolinas, obviously, but Milton's approaching Florida now. I mean, this is at least some good news that some states are stepping up to help, is it not? Yeah, we're, uh, I mean, is, I know the federal government and the, and the states are also responding to Mm -hmm. uh, the emergency piece of this, uh, this storm for whether it was North Carolina or now back into Florida. And, uh, we, we're always focused on the things that we do and try to do them well. And so we're, we're pre-prepped and we were already in Florida we're in the Tampa area because there was a lot of people that flooded from this first storm. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we were also in Perry. And so, uh, we've positioned them back in Georgia until the storm passes. And then we're going to, we're going to go back, right back in and then continue to, to assess where uh, there may be more needs. Can you um, explain what your organization is all about? Because some, a lot of people might not be familiar with Samaritan's Purse. Yeah, so Samaritan's Purse is a Christian um, disaster relief organization uh, that works internationally and uh, within the U.S. here. And uh, we were, and that's for uh, whether it's a natural disaster or man-made disaster. And so we go in and we try to provide uh, uh, just quick relief, uh, whether that's uh, working on homeowners' uh, families' homes uh, or it's uh, it's it's if it's around the world, food di food distribution, medical, uh, whatever those needs may be. Uh, we go in and try to provide some relief uh, for those families. But we do it in the name of Jesus Christ. We do that because. 
uh, we have the opportunity to share the gospel with, uh, with families who we're working with. And how are you funded? Uh, we have donors. We have uh, uh, private donors who send in uh, monthly, and then they also send in whenever we have uh, uh, disasters that we're working on. That's amazing, all donation-based. Yeah, that is all, all domain. That's donation wonderful. base is great. It is Good true. I mean, obviously, you being a Christian organization, there was a while there, there'd be a bump in the road here and there. I, have we gotten past that now? Is it okay to be a Christian again? I mean, <laughs> you know, I grew up Roman Catholic, so that's why I'm wondering. Well, I, I mean, from my perspective, it's always <laughs> great to be a Christian. I mean, Good. we do this because we <laughs> want to love our neighbors. And, um, right. Right. You know, Samaritan's Purse, we hold deeply to God's word as our absolute truth. And so God's word compels us to go and help our neighbors and to love our neighbors. And um, but we do that with a message. And that's what in our mission. It's a uh, it's to go and share the gospel. And that, you know, that that message is for uh, for your your audience as well. It's mm -hmm. God loves you. He loves you so much. He sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross. And he did that to take the punishment for the bad things that we do. You know, we, we all do things that are wrong. It goes against uh, God's truth. And so Jesus took that punishment, died on the cross, and God raised him from the dead. Uh, the Bible says if you turn away from that, if you turn from your sin and put your faith in Jesus Christ, you can have eternal life, but you also can have uh, a relationship with God right now. So when you're going through uh, times that are hard, but even good times, he's there for you. And um, that's the message we we want to share. We work with local churches. And we do this around the world. And you're, you're based in Boone, South Carolina, North Carolina. Boone, North Carolina. North Carolina. So oh, you. Really? So were you? Was your um, were, were your facilities, your offices affected by the storm? Yeah, we had a we had a. I mean, there was a lot of rain that came down, so the, the rivers were flooded all around us. Um, we lost power for. Uh, a good while we lost communications uh we, we have generators and we're able to get back back up with starlink and things like that and then we got our comps back on but yeah we uh we we were down we had a lot of staff that got affected from the storm too trees down um you know their homes were flooded and uh but you know we have we have amazing staff uh they believe in the mission and so they quickly dug out and then we all helped each other where we could. And uh, we got back to work so that we could help our neighbors uh, here in the high country, Asheville, you know, all the other areas that we're working. Well, yeah, we're, we're hearing so many things about the Asheville area and beyond. And it, it's like, we don't, I don't know what to believe. I mean, FEMA was slow <laughs> coming in. There's many, many individual groups that are helping a lot like yours yours um is there some what could you give us like a little capsule of what actually was going on in your opinion as far as like government help and i i hear there's still people up in the mountains that aren't being helped much what's true what's not that that's that's a tough thing to determine i mean when we go into an area we we really focus on our operations and we we coordinate with local authorities and, and i'll tell you we've got some great local authorities that we've been working with um emergency management um you know mayors and and, and things like that the local police forces the fire departments search and rescue uh just that's good to hear they are they're so awesome and i'd ask you and your audience continue to pray for them um there's so much still going on and yeah there's people that are that are in some areas that are are you know still disconnected a little bit and so when we go in i mean we focus on our mission and what we do do best and so we like to connect with local churches and so sure. um you know the local church is the one that loves to get out and help their neighbors very quickly and so you know, you've, you've probably seen or heard that we've had a lot of helicopter flights uh, to where we're getting to, peop to people mm -hmm. where they can't, uh, you know, they, they're, they're disconnected from, from everyone. And so we're finding landing spots, finding local churches. We're connecting with them with food, water, medical supplies, um, tetanus shots. Um, we've got Starlinks that we're helping put out in communities. So we just jump into action and uh, we do this again to be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. And so um, when you partner with the local church and, 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 you know, we're able to just quickly get out to the people. 
is it clean? Are you cleaning up now? Is is all the damage is assessed? Everything's happened. The have the floodwaters subsided? Is everything like in cleanup mode now? So yeah, we're in cleanup mode. The uh, the floodwaters have subsided, but what you oh, no. that have just been completely destroyed um, in all all in a ton of areas here in the uh, in the high country, and so. We're working, you know, here, just here in Boone and, you know, we'll continue to do this, but just with heavy equipment uh, operators, we've had so many, again, great people from around the state, around the country that's been calling in, raising their hand. Hey, can we help, you know, help put driveways back in? Can we help put culverts back in? And uh, so we've been out uh, doing some of that work. Uh, we're mudding out homes and uh, I would invite each of you to come do a mud out with us. It's some, it's some tough work. It's a, uh, Get your Tyvek suits on, you're, uh, you're under a crawl space, you're under a house, you're in a house up to, you know, one, two feet of mud. Uh -huh. And uh, you're just digging it out and you're putting it in buckets and you're getting it outside. It smells awful. It's, it's <laughs> nasty. You're, uh, you're cutting uh, sheetrock out. You're taking uh, insulation out and you're trying to get that house to where it can breathe and dry up so that the family can, can save their home. And you're trying to prevent the mold. So we, we spray like a, a solution called shockwave on it. it kills mold or prevents it from coming back and uh this just allows uh, the the families to get into their next step so we're cutting trees we're tarping roofs um like i said we've had helicopter missions where we're we're dropping things to people to to meet their immediate needs uh we set up a uh, a field hospital with cannon memorial hospital uh for a while that's closed down but we were helping with the overflow of people who were coming in from avery county we were working with some local hospitals uh, to provide oxygen. You know, as people lost their their electricity, they needed to stay under oxygen. So we had some overflow tents working with those hospitals. And now we have water filtration systems in the Asheville area to provide clean drinking water for people as well. That is a wonderful thing. Any way uh, that people in Minnesota and everybody listening to this across the United States, any way they could reach out to help you guys fund this whole thing? Yeah, you go to our website, SamaritansPurse.org, and that'll show you all the ways they can help out. We always say, first of all, just just pray, pray for the, pray for the people who are affected, pray mm -hmm. for the people who are, you know, I'm not switching gears, but you know, there's another hurricane heading uh, to Florida. Right. We want to yes. pray that that downgrades and uh, really it disappears. But pray for those families as well. But yeah, pray for these families that they can recover. Pray for local um, mercy management, fire department, police, highway patrol you know, wisdom on their decisions and safety and pray for our staff. And I just want to highlight too, we have all local volunteers in this work described. Oh, could you do that again? You yeah, kind of broke up that whole time. turned could into you... a robot a bit. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh, we're done. Mm, I think, yeah. I, I think, think connection's if you been... can hear us, uh, your connection's pretty bad now. I can hear you. Oh, there you Hello? go. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yep. yep. Okay. I was just saying one, we always ask you can get our website. You can see how we're all the work that we're doing, but we'd ask for everyone to pray just for, for uh, these families to, as, as we're assisting them to help them uh, recover, um, pray for the locals, uh, local emergency management, police, everybody pray for our uh, staff and uh, volunteers. And just wanted to highlight, we have some amazing volunteers coming in to do this work that I just described. And uh, you can find out on SamaritansFirst.org. I, I was stunned the amount of damage that was done there. My it, parents until last shocking. year lived about 10 miles from you and you know where Todd is, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right down the street. Yeah. I lived on top of a mountain. They finally sold the place and, and moved away. And, I, and I've spent a lot of time there. And to think that a hurricane area. could do that much damage up in the mountains of North Carolina is just shocking. It really is. Yeah, the, the devastation, it, it, it's, I, I think we can use the word catastrophic in, yeah. in a lot of these areas. And uh, that's not a word to be taken lightly when you're, when you're talking about destruction in an area. Well, I read something that a lot of people have lost their homes there and they don't have flood insurance, which you wouldn't think to have up there. But there's also something called landslide insurance. Oh, God. Oh, and that's a yeah. separate thing that that's nobody has. Mountain. So a lot yeah. of these people where their homes have slid down. Yep. They're, they're getting nothing. Well, that was my question too about okay, so you're you're taking all this mud out of the house, so it's not like a car; it gets totaled 
and you just get it, you just forget it and tear tear down the house. You are, are, is it because these people don't have insurance, or is that what the insurance companies require you to do? Is try to save the home? Well, when you when you when you do a mud out, and again, every every house has a different level of how bad it is. And I've seen, you know, from a little bit of water in a basement to complete landslide to where even right two minutes from my home a house was was knocked off its foundation and half of it was in the road it took two days just to get some of that out of the way so that we could drive past it um and that's you're finding that in all all different areas and different ways and so when we mud out a home it's you know i was with a, a family just the other day if i can just tell a quick story um the, the river flooded and um he and his uh, his wife and his daughter were trying to get out. It was getting almost chest deep, and so they got out in their canoe. And he realized there's next his next door neighbor was this was this elderly lady. So he starts walking just next door. The water's up to his chest. It's rushing like crazy. Um, okay. As he gets to her house, um, um, someone from her, you know from the emergency uh, evacuation team comes out and they are able to get her out. So he's able to kind of swim, walk back over to get in the canoe and, uh, and then get to a little bit higher ground of safety. And so all that water and mud that was picked up from the river just is dumped in the house. And so our team comes in and we, we, we removed everything from the house because it was completely destroyed, couches, beds, mattresses, everything. Mm -hmm. And you just take it out to the front yard. And so the contractors come and help take that. But if you can imagine the smell, um, yeah. it's completely ruined. And then and then what you do is to save the home, because um, you're right, there's not a lot of people that have flood insurance, one, but then landslide insurance is a whole nother separate thing. Right. And uh, so we're, we try to get the house can dry out and breathe. And then you're trying to prevent mold from coming in. And so yeah. if you if you can do that, so if you, even if you don't have insurance, okay, next step is can you get a contractor in to put new and to get new flooring in so that you can kind of get back to normal. Incredible. We love the whole thing. And you know, I and I really do appreciate you wishing everybody well. I do not like the fact that some people, oh my God, he's bringing up religion and oh, there's blah. You're wishing people well. People, in my view, right now, at least on national television, never have been harsher to one another than they are right now. So to meet someone like you who stepped up to help people when you didn't have to, and if it's based in your faith, well, then God bless you. I think it's wonderful news, and thank you so much for doing it, and thanks for your time uh, this morning. Well, I appreciate the time you've given me. Uh, you know yeah, Why, if you can hear us again, you're back to being very, a robot. Oh, well. Well, thank you for your time. Yes, thank you so much for your time, and God bless you. Thank you. I would just like to know why it is that when I was going to get a compliment, God ruined the signal. <laughs> That's what I'd like to know. Classic you know, and this God. is okay. So we tried to get them on last week, and mm -hmm. communications have been so bad in that area. We yep. finally, right. this is the best we've got. So what you can do in case, because I dealt with this a lot. If you just have them turn their video off, I was going to suggest that, but because that eats up so much power, oh, yeah, right. yeah, much the right. audio will be much better. Yes. Okay, well, they well they tested it, and it, I mean it was pretty good for yeah, a while. It, it, it's good. It was really good for a while, but mm -hmm. then yeah, it was great to have them on. Yes, it was great to have them. On. They, I mean, these you can't imagine the amounts of money that they have to have just to take the supplies to people. I mean, they, they have, they have semi trucks and warehouses and all of this just in case for people. All right. It's an amazing organization. And if you're so inclined, please do donate to Samaritan's Purse. That would be very nice. How do they do that? Just reach out to just Samaritan's Purse. Go on directly. their website most likely. And you can just, uh, I mean, most people, most charity and organizations like this have donation sites. Why do you think it website. is that people, people, um, you know, some religion gets carried away. There's no question about it. But do people think the world's better off now that that there there's no belief in a greater good or God? I think a lot or of people have stuff? beliefs. I hope they it's do. Just, you know, there are a lot of times opposing beliefs. <laughs> yeah, but the greater good's the greater good. How can you even argue with that? 
you know, it's like I got uh, I've got some well, there was a lot of contention in my my own family because there was a uh, I don't want to talk to I'm not talking trash by the way. It's just this no, a fact. No, I my parents were Catholic. Somebody in my family was a born again Christian. And she's telling my parents who are born Catholic that they're they're not going to make it to heaven. Oh, she knows that, that does she? Recog- well, I mean that's that's what I'm saying. Yeah. You know, it's like my parents felt that the Catholic Church was the one true church. Right. For them, that Peter Ooh. built upon the rock of something, and <laughs> whatever he did, and that's the rock. And, Peter, you are <laughs> you are my rock. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. yeah. I mean, yeah. that's that's why they thought that the Catholic faith was the one true faith, and you know, Lutherans were like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> They're Mon- gonna... Monty Python nailed this in the late yeah. Brian. <laughs> they really did. Are you the People's Front of Judea? No, we're the Judean People's Front. Of people's front of it's Judea. The it's the same it thing, and I just think that. This people with a mission, whether it's you know through God, Jesus Christ, if they've got a mission that's doing good for people, I can't fault yeah, them. them. Can't yeah. fault them. I yeah, yep. totally agree. And churches throughout the ages have been very helpful to a lot of. I mean, they've done some weird stuff. They've done some terrible stuff, but they have been there usually for people that have had big problems, whether it's plagues or yep. starvation or whatever. And I've so. spent a lot of time in that town that he lives in, Boone. It's beautiful. It's oh, a, the whole it's a, area is so It's a college gorgeous. town. It's Appalachian State University okay. is there. And so it's probably, it's like Northfield in the mountains. Okay. Northfield, Minnesota was at 4,000 feet in oh, western so North Carolina. It looked yeah. like that. I don't know if we drove through there. Is that near that Blue Ridge Mountain yes, very highway yes. or yeah, whatever the, it's called? The yeah. Blue Ridge Parkway. That yeah, is so... Which is closed indefinitely because there's big sections of it are washed uh, out. Yeah, that's what I we, heard. Yeah, we, we went there a couple of years ago and drove on that parkway. It's beautiful. All the way through yeah. down to uh, Highlands. Highlands in that area got some flooding. Cashier, cashiers, they call it. it. looks like cashiers. Yeah. That area got some problems, but they were spared a lot compared to the Asheville area. Well, yeah, Asheville's at the bottom of Big Valley, really. That's just yeah, uh, yeah. Was, mm. Love that place. And I remember when the first reports, oh, her major hurricane damage in North Car- yeah, Carolina. Yeah, fifteen miles like, away. Wait a minute, it's in the mountains. It's not on the coast. Well, apparently there was some perfect storm thing yeah. that came through. It, it it was such a powerful storm, and then it somehow sucked up all of the moisture from the mountains because they had had a lot of rain. Yep, and dumped. 30 inches of rain. But you think about, oh, 30 inches, that's not so much. But when it's all coming down into one small area. It is. I remember yeah. in 87 when we got 10 inches of rain in one storm and yeah. flooded 494. I was working right. in Penn Avenue. No, I remember that. Yeah. yeah, it's kind of shocking how much. And that was just yeah. 10. Mm-hmm. Just 10. Exactly. I mean, that area just, I mean, so many videos of little dogs on top of roofs, you know, waiting for someone to come and get A lot of this them. is AI stuff. I mean, it's uh, just. No, it's, some of it's true. Some of it is true. You're bears, right. bears up in a big tree, you know, like five, six bears up there, you know, trying to survive a flood. I mean, yeah, I mean, it was devastating. And there's a lot of people that still, I don't even know if a lot, of, if everybody's rescued yet. I, mm, they it's very inaccessible yeah. to get because a lot of those mountain little mountain roads they turn into dirt roads. Oh yeah, and that yeah. was washing out first. That's what came down the mountain yeah. first. That is true. Yeah. Now I will say this because this is my example of not being such a pain in the ass to other human beings. Oh, sure. Hang on Write a second, Andy. Yeah. Push record. <laughs> yeah, there you push yeah. record. TiVo. Oh, uh, <laughs> I thought I was, I was supposed to do that forty minutes ago. What yeah. I, <laughs> I forgot. Oops. Um, there's another story. Governor Tim Walls orders flags at half staff for fallen park ranger Kevin Grossheim. Oh, is that what I saw? Park 55 ranger. died Sunday trying to uh, rescue a Wisconsin family stranded on an island in Voyagers National Park. They got out. He did not. What happened? But see, even though I don't like one thing about Tim Walls, he's not my kind of guy. I think he lies his ass off. That's I will still like lies. to thank him and congratulate him for honoring this fallen park ranger <clears throat> and for offering to help out with North Carolina. See, I don't have a guy just because he's, I don't agree with his politics, but <clears throat> I hate him. That's not how it works. I don't agree with one thing that Tim Walls believes in, but it was wonderful what he just did with this fallen park ranger and he's going to do for North Carolina. 
That's wonderful work. Why can't people, even if you don't like the person, if they're doing a good thing, could you give them the nod? Yeah. That yeah. would work out nicely. Why can't we do that? Why, why do you think that's such a problem? Well, not every, no, no one is 100% terrible and no one is 100% good. <laughs> it's that's a good way to put it. <laughs> so, you damn right. Yeah. Speaking of politics, I have a question for you. I was yes, listening sir. to the podcast before I got here, the, mm -hmm. the first one. And you had lunch with Tim and uh, Norm Coleman. How is Norm doing? Norm's doing very, very is well. He? I mean, he, yeah, he's he working. Was, yeah, he's working. Working, he traveling. Really? Yeah. Yep. Did he look like? He looks phenomenal. Didn't he have a stroke or no, something? No, he had oh, cancer. He had a, well, he had well, cancer like there's no tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a bunch he, of like cancer. There's no tomorrow. Was, I thought he was done a couple of years ago. He oh, yeah. It sounded like it was. Really yeah, bad. that's how it was. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're absolutely he somehow right Somehow made a recovery. And we talked. We did talk about that. He looks fantastic, although he was wearing his wife's vest yesterday. It was this pink, <clears throat> pink vest that he was wearing. Man, 2018. Oh, it's, it's breast cancer awareness month. Spread from his neck and throat to his lungs. Yes. Yeah. yeah the yep. fact that he's still alive is pretty impressive. Yeah. Well, my brother, he's apparently cancer free. He had lung cancer too. Wow. Jerry yeah, Ziegler, your brother-in-law. Yeah, we all. He was. Thought he was, he was, he was in yep. hospice. Yep. He got kicked out of hospice because okay. he wasn't dying, and now all of a sudden he's feeling great. Get the hell out of here! You're well, Jimmy Carter's healthy. been in hospice for a year. Yeah, for yeah, real. He's a hundred. Yeah, it well, is. It's incredible. He looks bad. It's incredible how far cancer treatment has come just in my lifetime. Well, yeah, my brother. Yeah. Um, I think it was called Keytruda. Keytruda. There's a lot of these drugs that, if you have a certain genetic component, they work for you. Great, but if you don't have it, it doesn't work for you. Yeah, and that's and how they, a lot of cancer treatments. Well, they've are. been working on all of that for a long time, and apparently they've made great strides. And that I think that's the future of medicine is to mm -hmm. custom make it for everybody. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, because, rather than the sledgehammer technique, right? Mm -hmm. Where you just try to kill it, kill yeah. um, mostly yeah. kill you, and hopefully you're strong yeah. enough to come back. If yeah. the cancer dies before you do, then success. You're right. Exactly. I guarantee you one thing: Toots is up there <laughs> spinning in heaven. Spinning, spinning. Yeah, she's spinning. She's not happy. She's dancing. Widow of Robert F. Kennedy suffers a stroke and dies. Apparently. Uh, oh, Ethel yeah. Kennedy. Oh, Ethel Kennedy. Oh, she's wait a minute. She is 95. Not, she has not yes. died yet. If they had, she's been hospitalized in oh, very oh. serious. 96. Condition. 96. Yeah. Okay. Wow. But Ethel, that was a big name, right? RFK <laughs> and Ethel. Yep. They were, yeah. I tell you, uh, I used to want to live to be a hundred and no, thank you. Not anymore. As long as no. you're feeling it good. Depends. There are people that are 100 that are like, not many. Fine. Not many. <laughs> guy not I'm many, named after made a, died of pneumonia at 101, gave up driving at 96. Okay. Little, he was too old for World War I. <laughs> what? And I, yeah, he was born in 1880 and oh died my. in 1981. <laughs> wow. Came over here in 1912, never lost his English accent. And he was petite i mean he was like just a wee thing 411 105 <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah really 19th funny. century england probably a lot of malnutrition i'm yeah. guessing well, they just and I, you know i asked him when i was probably 15 i says uncle doug in your lifetime you've seen the invention of the telegraph the radio television the automobile the airplane space travel yep. nuclear war penicillin what's the best invention in your lifetime sure without missing a beat at 96 he goes Oh, lad, that's an easy one. It's a little old for me, but it's perfect for you. It has to be the birth control pill. <laughs> <laughs> so if I can do that at 96, sign me up. Yeah, yeah. there you go. Right. Yeah, well, that's true. If I'm drooling in the potted plant exactly. in the corner in the day room, no. Yeah. Not dementia. So much. No, thank you. Yeah. I've already told the kids if I get dementia, they can just uh, take me in the woods. <laughs> yeah. Let's go Have hunting, a little Mom. hunting accident. It's you fine always, by me. You've always told me to smother you with a pillow <laughs> or something. Always. Yeah. Something. Well, so I didn't even get asked to be part of this deal. You're just going to kill my yeah, wife. You might, you're, you're well, I know you wouldn't about. do it. Yeah. So mm. there's no you're way you out. Do that. What do you mean I'm I out? I remember my dad one time. He's, <clears throat> I know this, it's, it's morbid comedy. He, you know, he was losing his sight and he's this and that, and he's just like falling apart. And my mom had died a year before and he was up here and it was COVID and all of the yeah. horrible. It was a rough time to be 95. Long-term care facility uh, uh, laws that they passed were just brutal. And um, he says to me, he said, would you shoot me? <laughs> and I said, sure. He goes, you would you? <laughs> Oh boy! Really? 
Honestly, Catherine, she was Catherine, all excited Catherine, that I, I would... Catherine, I don't think the apple fell very far from the tree in your no, case. No need a for bit. a paternity test for you and your dad. <laughs> no. No. I was just like, no, dad, I can't shoot you. I can't. Unfortunately, I cannot just shoot nope. you. Unfor yeah. Sorry. Unfortunately, I just don't think I could push your wheelchair far enough into the forest to get it done. <laughs> Yeah. But he was all excited that he thought I was going to really? shoot, shoot him, him for a couple of minutes there. You would. I gave him some hope. <laughs> well, I mean, being immobile and blind is not great. No, it was it horrible. Is not and, great. And, not great. and my dad was the guy that didn't ask for help. If yeah. he wanted to build a retaining wall, he got a lifetime, life, whatever books. What were those things? Remember those books about? Oh, yeah. Before YouTube. Retaining walls for dummies. No, the there, there was there was some series of do-it-yourself books. Huh. It was like an encyclopedia. Yeah. I can't remember what they were called, but anyway, he would just get one of those from the library, learn how to make a retaining wall, and he'd work. He'd take a couple days off work, and for four days, he would just shovel and lay bricks and do this and that. And four days, you had a retaining wall. I, okay, your yeah. dad was in World War Two, right? Yep. So I'm guessing if you can dig a foxhole while people are shooting at you, yeah, building a retaining wall is actually yeah. pretty easy. Because he really was nothing. he was infantry, which yeah. means he, he probably saw most of the worst of it. He yeah. called himself a foot slaughter. Well, yeah, that's yeah, cannon fodder is what they used to call him. Yep, foot slaughter in the army. Mm -hmm. Fun stuff. Yeah, and he was a heavy gunner too, so he was. It's amazing Ugh. he got out of there. Well, he got promoted and promoted and promoted, and then he had an incident. Mm. <laughs> Punch somebody out? What kind uh, of an incident? Uh, yeah, he was he 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 had done all of his stuff and he was sleeping, and some sergeant or something came in. I think he was like, "What? What's below a sergeant?" I don't know. Uh, corporal, I think. Corporal Lance Corporal. I used to know. Lance Corporal. Okay, I think he was two steps below that. He had been promoted a lot, and he was just a young kid. And um, anyway, this general or lieutenant or whoever he was kicked him. He kicked him out of the uh, bed, and my dad, you know, he's a soldier. Yeah. He's being fired at all the time. Uh, he jumped up and beat the crap out of him. I don't <laughs> even know if he knew who it was. And so he got, uh, instead of being court-martialed, they took him down, I don't know how many levels, and said, okay, you can keep you can keep on that front there with right. that heavy gun. Keep shooting people, Hopefully, or you'll... we're going to pay you less. Exactly. Yeah. Well, Thank I mean, you, you walk up, service. You walk up and you surprise kick a PTSD-riddled foot soldier, you know. Why would you You can't kick... expect anything good to well, happen. Why would you kick your own person anyway? I mean, really. P petty tyrant. Pe well. You wanted to show everyone who's boss. Oh, well, and that's what my dad what said. My dad do. said everybody hated him anyway, yeah. so it was just, you know, I, he got what he deserved, and I'm not sorry I did it. Yeah. And that's why <laughs> we have the term fragging today. Fragging? Fragging, yep. What they used to do Vietnam is Vietnam thing. Oh yeah. Oh yep. yeah. Uh, Unpopular when um, officers would get killed by hand grenades. Yep. Well, first what they fire. do is what they do is they would leave a grenade in their bed. Oh. So not a live grenade. Well, I mean a live grenade, but with the pin still in. So it's like you you pull back the sheets, you get in bed, and there's a grenade, which meant next time the pin's not going to be in. It didn't happen too often, but I mean, can you imagine some of these officers, just how much the power went to their heads? Oh, God, yes. And they, yes. these soldiers are already like starving and dehydrated in this Vietnamese jungle. It's like, yeah. I you, can't even imagine. Not a good scenario for I, anyone. My dad never talked about his service until he was much, 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 much older. I yep. think like in his mid 80s, he started talking about it. I guess there was enough distance. And I asked him one time, I said, so, I mean, are you just terrified all the time? All this gunfire is like gunfire didn't bother us. It was the mortars. Yeah. The mortars <laughs> yeah, coming in. Go. Those were scary. Yeah. Because you hear the mortars coming. Yeah. But you don't know where they're going to hit. And they, and they, you know, the shrapnel flies everywhere. Mm -hmm. And people just, you know, the guy next to you can just be wiped out and you're fine. Yeah. He, he was like, that was just. So terrible. was he in Europe or? or yeah. Asia? Yeah. He went, he was overseas. Yep. At 16, yep. he 17. Marched, he marched uh, somehow from Northern Africa all the way up to Germany. Got up all the way. Oh, wow. So yeah. part of the Italian invasion, probably, too. Yeah, probably. Wow. Sure. Yeah, I guess you can go online and get their, I got his dog tags and all that stuff. And, uh, yeah, can, if you, you can, can find his regiment entire, and everything. Yeah, yeah. You, can, yeah you can follow the entire mm -hmm. route that they took, which is pretty amazing for back then. You'd think that they'd yeah. have sketchy. 
records. No, if there's one thing the we have very good records of, it's war. Yeah. You go back 2,000 years, they've got meticulous records of who led who into what area and killed who. That's true. My goodness. Well, mm -hmm. that's how, you know, territories were won and yep. how many, you know, you had to account for the bodies and all that yeah. stuff. That's so how I empires that's were true. built. Yep. Yep. But okay. anyhow. We only got a couple of minutes, but I want to run these by you and get your opinion on them. Oh, boy. Five issues were Trump flip-flopped and five issues were Harris flip-flopped. Do you have any guesses what they might be? Fracking. I, I know that Harris is fracking. fracking. She's at immigration. Uh, levies on flip flops. Levies on flip flops. Okay, here, here are Trump's. Mm -hmm. uh, electric cars. Oh my God. Abortion, where uh, this is Trump, where his stance falls <clears throat> along the political spectrum. Uh, he was more progressive in 1999, more conservative in 2016. And he's kind of backed up a little bit since then. Oh, this is how they're going to. I don't want to go through this because you got to look no. at all these, break all this stuff down. But I'll just name what he, he flip flopped on abortion, salt cap, uh, marijuana, repealing Obamacare, and TikTok. Those are the ones he's. Yeah, he was going to ban TikTok oh, or something. That's right. oh, yeah. And I will never forgive him for not doing it. Why is that? TikTok is, I don't know. I don't think kids should be. I've never been on it. It's basically like Instagram, but even more ADD. <laughs> more really? ADD. I mean, these videos are like Jesus. five seconds long. You just, you watch it. You, you know, laugh. You forget it existed. You swipe down. You watch another one. I, yeah. I, I see TikTok videos on, I'm not on TikTok, but I see their videos. They're reposted all over the place um it's very very popular it sure is most people under 30 are on it yeah yeah like instagram is over 30 i think maybe mm -hmm. and tiktok is under 30 medicare for all for uh kamala harris uh she wanted medicare for all in 2017 not so much in 2020 and she keeps moving further to the right on that uh, fracking, she was totally against it in 2029. Now in 2024, she's very centrist about fracking, which is what you guys already mentioned. The Green New Deal, totally against, oh, she was more progressive about a Green New Deal. Now she's more centrist. Decriminalizing border crossings, very progressive in 2019. Now in 2024, she's very centrist. She doesn't want to forgive all that. And then finally, Zero Emissions Vehicle Act, 2019, very progressive now. She, well, she's basically come from very progressive to very centrist on every issue. Mm. And I'll, I she's suppose a politician. That's good. She's got to yeah. do that. She'll say things and then it doesn't matter what she says. No. Look at I what suppose. she does. Yeah, I suppose no, she accused true. Joe Biden of uh, molesting children <coughs> and then ran and then became oh, his right, vice president. Yeah, so did, when, when they're running for office, they just say anything. Yep. It just doesn't matter. I still cannot believe they have between Harris and Trump, they have over a billion dollars in donations. I'm surprised it's that little. Well, she's got 650 understand. and he's got 350 is I think the way it went. That's insane. Holy God, that's a lot of, where does that money go if they still, don't win? Yeah. And she's out there still fundraising. It's like, how much money do you need lady? So what a does lot. happen to that money when they, if they win, lose, whatever. Campaigning costs. Goes to all their staffers. They have. Yep. They must have. They probably have a hundred thousand staffers I, each. I just, thought they got to keep the uh, leftovers. No, I don't think they can keep them personally. Oh, I thought they could. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. They they have to go somewhere. There's like a legal requirement for I where all that money keep goes. Running but... for office and losing and just keeping. Well, the but money. that's the thing. Is that's <laughs> what a lot of them, that's <laughs> what a lot of them do. Be a career path. <laughs> that's what a lot of them do. They if they don't stop campaigning, then they get to keep using the campaign money, and there you go. And so you get to pay yourself. I'm guessing. I believe you're allowed to take a certain amount for like a personal salary. They're but... civil Alex. servants, though. It's very annoying. I'm sorry. I have a stabbing going. thing. Stabbing, yes. a stabbing thing. She's got a stabbing thing. Stabbing thing. Let's right, well, see. Time what to head happens to, the house to campaign now. contributions after election? I, I thought we talked about this one time before, and we determined that they could keep it. Probably. Uh, probably they can either that. donate it to charity, which means <laughs> a company that their buddy <laughs> started about. yesterday, yeah, and they give right. it back to them, <laughs> or they can donate it to other candidates. Well, oh. they can't keep it. And those are the main ones. Are, uh, it, maybe, per, the, maybe there's federal. 
campaigns yeah. and local campaigns. Yeah. Some amount of personal use is allowed, but it, yeah, it depends on what it is. Hmm. There you go. Right. <clears throat> interesting. Very interesting. Once again, please donate to someplace like Samaritan's Purse or yes. there's C the Cajun Army. They're doing good work. Mm -hmm. um, there's a bunch of them out there, but. All right. Any closing words from the group? I just saw Kristen Burt uh, evacuated safely. Yeah, she did. Where she was she? Miami. She's in Miami now. What is she doing in Miami during a hurricane? Well, she was uh, she was up in Orlando. Yeah, Miami's oh. the safe part. Right. Yeah, it's going north. Okay. Yeah. yeah, it might. Is it going to, do they know, is there like a possibility it's going to go through West Palm Beach? No, no. No, we're going to get some, we might get some northern, some rain. Oh, they've, well, they've eliminated the <coughs> southern path? It, well, it's interesting. Our friends who live in Naples, they built a house and granted they're on the beach, and but they built a house that's designed for hurricanes, right? They had total insurance. Their house got hit. The house did what it was supposed to do. The whole first level was whatever was down there was wiped out. Insurance said, too bad, so sad. They wouldn't pay. Them. <laughs> they wouldn't pay. They wouldn't they would pay they paid for their cars and their their furniture and stuff, right. but they would not pay for the whatever That's had quite whatever the loss. Other, yeah, it was yeah, a huge loss. And now you know? it just hit them again. Yeah, they got minor damage this time. That was no. more up in uh it's not over yet though. Yeah, but this is Tampa, right? That's going to hit. Well, did it, it, did it hit land place. yet? No, tonight. Tonight. Is yeah. oh, midnight. Apparently. Losing? Is it gaining? Is it losing? Well, it, they think it'll be down to a category three, but the, the okay. problem they're predicting, especially in Tampa, St. Pete, like a 15 foot storm surge. Oh, Whoa. Apparently, all so of there won't be the wind that'll be as bad as they thought <laughs> it's a couple always days the surge ago, that gets it's you. The, it's the water. Apparently, all the Floridians are very nervous because the Waffle Houses are closing. Yes, that's and like bad. That's FEMA, bad news. FEMA uses the Waffle House like index as an indicator. As an indicator yep. of how bad a storm is going to be very because true. Waffle House has like their own. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Apparently, Waffle situation. House has its own like command center they to do. help. They yeah, do, they've yeah. got a whole. Yeah. Command so everybody, center. so there's all these people that are like waffle houses are closing, like evacuate. Yeah. <laughs> they do, they do, yeah. they do rescue missions and all that stuff through this uh, command center. Yeah. That, they, crazy. yeah, they feed people and help people all over. So yeah. Yeah, I guess my, waffle house is a good company. My mm -hmm. favorite thing about hurricanes though, and the weather channel's gotten better about this, where they have the <clears throat> reporter that's battling the oh, yeah. wind yeah, and the water. There, and then in the yeah. background, there's kids playing Frisbee. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> sure. <laughs> All right. We'll talk to you tomorrow.